so before I start every night. Now, I'm not recording this entire process just because there'd be so many parts to this, it'd be absolutely ridiculous. But before I start pounding or welding or heating this thing up every night, I do a hammer test on it to make sure I have not ruined the temper on that. Because if I ruin the temper on this thing, if I draw too much hardness out of it, I'm going to be reheat treating it. And if I have to, I will. We will figure it out. So, here's where the welds are. Now, where I hit the 7018 along the edges, it's pretty well dead. Well, made a liar out of me, but when you... Of course, these are kind of gummed up, but that's softer. That's what I want, because I don't want those edges chipping out on me. I don't mind those being softer. I can dress them up a few times if I need to. But, this is where our... Uh, this is where we welded our... Or hard, hard alloy 58, and I'll tell you what, that stuff is no fun to strike an arc on, I found, and that's after heating the rod up. They recommend 100 amps for this. I have the options on that old Lincoln of either 90 or a, between 90 and 115, or they, they recommend 110 amps, excuse me. So I'm running it on 115 amps, so that's the closest number I have, but... I'm not really burning into the face too much. This is just a layer, but I've noticed that this rod is a bitch to get going and it likes a long arc. Kind of likes a longer arc than anything I've ever used. And as these welds are cooling, I take and I beat the hell out of them with the hammer flatten them down good. Because this rod, it, it air hardens and it also work hardens. So the more we use this, the harder this surface right here is going to get, the more rebound we're going to get over time. Now we're not building this up a ton. We don't want just a huge blister. Well, I guess it pretty well will be, but this kind of rod, we don't want a ton of different... It's not a filling layer. It's not a build-up layer. This is a surfacing rod. So we have to be very conscious of how thick we make it. It's going to be an eighth of an inch down here. It's going to be a quarter of an inch on this side. And we're going to kind of blend it and work it in, but... I'd say that's pretty damn good. Off to heating this baby up for the night. Alright, I think that's about all the welding I plan on doing on this thing, except for maybe a few touch-ups. Now, we've been, been kind of going through checking temperatures on this face as we go. 
I think the highest I've had so far and I think it was about 280 and that was right close to the well drink now we're at well, it's going up let's see what we get here now I just shut the welder off just ran the last bead we're still going up right now Hundred and seventy two and climbing. These probes are a little slow, but they're I said they're very accurate. Come on. Settle out. It's really jumping a couple degrees at a time, which is a good sign. Two hundred. I still have to pound these out too while those while they're still hot. Take the stresses out of them. I just kind of wanted to show you guys that uh, this really isn't a bad process as long as you don't overheat this face. So we're starting to slow down in our climb now. We're at 212 degrees. 213. Two fourteen. We're still only climbing about a degree at a time, so I don't think we're too far off from where we're going to be here. 213 it's down to right there. Right close to where our last welds were. Let's see what we get here. We'll put it right on that bead. I started running my beads a little bit longer because I was noticing as I was checking my temperatures I wasn't climbing on this face all that fast. Um, actually it probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to heat it a little bit more as I was going. But fortunately this surfacing rod, it's a shallow rod, it doesn't dig in deep and it doesn't seem to heat too deep. 230.8 We'll go right on top here where this weld is. It should be quite a bit hotter. 320 and dropping. That's where our last bead. Now I just, I just shut this welder off. So I'll give you guys an idea. Now back here, away from where we were welding, I'm dropping. 209, 207, 205, 203.9. So honestly, I probably could have stood to heat this up a little bit more as we went, but that's a good indication that uh, we didn't destroy this anvil. Now, I have to, let's adjust you guys a little bit, I'll move you around. Tell you what, we're going to be grinding. We're going to be grinding our life away here. It's going to be a lot of grinding and sanding. So, anvil still hot. Now that's dead right now because I have to pound these out. feel as you're pounding this stuff out, the rebound gets better the more you pound on it. I don't know if more I peen those down. I 
that's pretty good. Now once we get that ground and we actually work this a little bit, it's going to get better. So, pretty happy with that right there. can grind for another month. That'll be awesome. Alright, so I've had, I can't tell you how many, how many comments on you're going to ruin that anvil. What are you doing that for? You just destroyed it. I've had multiple people tell me, uh, there's a Facebook group called Blacksmithing for Beginners, and I showed a picture of the edges welded up on there. And you wouldn't believe the amount of comments. You're going to destroy that thing. It's over. It's throw it in the trash. Um, there, you, that's very possible to do that. Very possible to ruin one of these doing exactly what I'm doing. Uh, some things were not meant to be welded to, but there is a process that if you follow it closely, there's quite a few processes laid out, even right down to how many passes, how long the bead lengths, things like that. What I found the best thing to do is just keep track of the temperature of that anvil face and as long as you don't bring it up over where you're going to take the hardness out of it, you're doing just fine. You, you got to be careful though. I mean it's, it's very easy to go too far and wreck it. But as you can see right after we finished welding, I mean I showed you guys that temperature probe maybe two minutes, if that, after the last weld the last arc was struck and I put the probe right on the welds. Um, that stuff I'm using is kind of a cold rod. It, uh, like I said, it's rated for 110 amps. I'm running it at 115 because that's the closest that I can get to that with the welder that I have. That works with an AC welder and it works with a DC welder. You can use either or. It's really good stuff. The, uh, the flux comes off really nice and easy. The only thing that can be a pain, it seems to like a really long arc and it takes a little bit longer to get the arc going to start forming a puddle when you first start out than a standard rod does. And once I kind of figured that out, it got a lot easier. As you could tell, the beads started getting easier to strike. But um, I'm pretty happy with it. So the more we pound on that, the more rebound we're going to get out of that surface. And you can see, I honestly, I have not lost any of the hardness anywhere else on that face. And as you can see, the more we pounded on that, the more rebound we had. Once we get that thing ground down, flattened out nice, which that's going to take me quite a while. It's probably it's going to take me days with what I have here to do that. I'm going to be using a belt sander a lot, grinder. I've got to pick up a cup stone and really flatten it out nice. I could take it to a machinist. I could try that, but then i got to lug that thing wherever. And I'm a cheapskate to begin with, so we're just going to see how it works out. If it looks like it's going to be too daunting to get that face nice and flat and trued up again, then I will take it somewhere and we'll just we'll pony up and get it done right. But um, the other thing, I chose the rod I chose because it can be heat treated if you need to. So even if I did ruin the hardness of that top, I would do what I have to do to heat treat that thing again, which would be real big coal fire outside and a pond or something like that to quench it in because something even a stock tank would be too small. Uh, and you have to keep it moving around quite a bit. But um, anyway, next one up, it's probably going to be just a big time lapse of grinding just to see where we come to for now. Now I kind of rigged up some pieces of metal over my hood tonight. What a difference that made sucking the fumes out. No clouds or anything like that. I should have done that last night. Probably would have been a lot safer. But uh, Fortunately, I didn't get too much of it last night. I still had the fan behind me blowing it away from me, but it was a little more 
than what I wanted for comfort level. I'd rather, I didn't have any coming up under the welding hood or anything like that, but with that rod there, man, you don't want to, don't take a chance. Make sure you have good ventilation. And disclaimer again, I'm not the guy to learn how to weld from. I'm not the guy to show you how to do it safely. All I can do is show you what works for me. You'll never see me do a video on this is how you strike an arc, this is how you do this or that. When it comes to welding, there are so many good channels out there that can give you the right information. Go seek them out and you will learn a lot more about welding than you're ever going to learn from me. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one.